You like to watch me suffer, don't you? We got another like goal, and today we'll be covering Poland as a consequence. And you know what? I'll show you how to dismantle the HRE in just two years as the Poles. And for 10,000 likes, we'll do the second part of this saga, where we form the Polish Tardom. That is correct, the Polish Tardom. Also, once we get 115,000 subs, my wife's gonna be doing her own EU4 video. And if you guys are interested in the save game for this run, you can find it over on my patreon page link is in the description and i invite you guys to check out my second channel where i post unedited raw footage from my live stream runs over on twitch all of the links in the description as you would expect poland is a very special nation because it can both play super wide and super tall what do i mean by this is if you want to play tall you got the best farmlands and grasslands in europe over here pretty much your entire country is farmlands or grasslands and and you can also access the Ukrainian parts, which again, are farmlands and grasslands majority. Not to mention, there's a lot of grain in here, so you can actually build a lot of soldiers' households. But at the same time, you got so many events like the free PU over Lithuania, the march over Moldova, and basically a free war against the Teutons, which all together make this nation ridiculously overpowered. But in order to get to that point, first thing we'll do is we're going to do our estates, some of the diet, and go for whichever agenda best suits us. Next up, we're going to give the plus one mana privilege for all three estates as well as the 25 advisor cost reduction privilege for all three as well i also recommend you give out the religious diplomats if you plan on destroying the hre it's going to make it a lot easier to ally the hre nations that you need to ally in order to destroy it alongside the patronage of the arts and of course supremacy over the crown we're also going to go to the province of uh, kalish here and we're going to encourage development followed up by devving this up once that means we can now sell titles for 500 ducats then go to the economic screen to refresh the values that's going to make this cheaper to dev up a second time so we dev this up a second time and after we've deved it up a second time we're going to seize lands if you really want to min max this you can wait for one month and then it's going to be even cheaper to dev this up a second time but personally for one single mana point i don't think it's much of a big deal get whichever advisors best suit you as well and the reason we do this with the crownless is because we want to get 0.20 autonomy rather than 0.30 because we are over five percent crownlands and he's Essentially, we're getting less of a debuff. The other modifiers here, don't bother with them too much because they're honestly not that important and they don't really mess up your country too much. So now that we've done that, we have two expansion paths as the Poles. First off, we can expand into the east, into the Muscovite lands, the Great Horde lands, and into the Baltics. At the same time, we can also expand into the HRE, but that would be a lot of aggressive expansion and every time you attack an HRE nation, you actually have to deal with the Austrian Emperor or whoever is the Emperor. Now, we can actually disband the HRE all we need to do for that is just ally all the HRE electors we're gonna do that right now it's actually quite easy for the Poles to ally all the electors in the first month of the game just make sure you pause after every one day as you can only send one diplo relation every day and in the first month if you send them out you can actually ally everybody before they get the malice and they don't accept to ally you we're also gonna recruit the independent company in this province here and we're gonna bring the other army next to the main army and as you can see we allied every single elector with the exception of bohemia and the reason for that is because we're going to use bohemia in order to disband the hre how am i going to do that well you have the option of rivaling the bohemians or you can ally the bohemians it's your choice if you ally them then you have to attack hungarians and if the hungarians ally the austrians you're going to be in an easy war against the austrians but this is quite a little bit rng we're going to start getting our claim on the hungarians just in case it doesn't work via the bohemians take note a lot of the times what's going to happen after the first month electors that you've allied will try to disband the alliance because you've allied their rivals like we did with the saxons here so what you can do in that situation is just get a royal marriage with them improve relations with them a little bit as well and that's enough to keep them as an ally for as long as we need them as an ally remember that these are temporary alliances we're not keeping these guys forever let's get the sweet royal marriage with the saxons that should make them there you go now they're not gonna disband the alliance anymore they did ally the Hungarians like I expected them to actually so I am gonna attack Hungary rather than Austria in that situation because I really want to take the uh, Nitrin lands for myself as a buffer between Hungary since it has the juicy gold mine in Hun so for that matter I'm not gonna attack the Austrians remember you always want to mold yourself on whatever RNG you get I could attack the Austrians now I could just declare a humiliation war against the Hungarians and that's all I need to do in order to disband the HRE but I'd rather declare a conquest war 
after my claim finishes, as that means I can even take land from the Hungarians and disband the HRE at the same time. We can even send a scornful insult to the Austrians to get a little bit of PP and uh, embargo all of our rivals at the same time. You will get an event at the beginning of the game where you get an option to either make Lithuania a junior partner or you can appoint a local noble and you don't get the PU over the Lithuanians. Obviously the best option to do is get the union over Lithuania as it essentially doubles our nation in size. Darya go, we now have a union over 25% of the European continent at this point. And we don't have the elective monarchy because we don't have the extra privilege that came with that event. Because we gave out four privileges from the beginning, we avoided the elective monarchy. So once we get to stability, we can even get rid of the golden lip privilege if we want to. And as such, we can directly form the nation of Ruthenia after we've managed to get these lands directly for ourselves. And I'll show you guys how you can do that after we disband the HRE. We managed to get our spy network to 20 in Hungary. That means we can get the claim on a Zepes over here. Wait for one day. Then we can attack the Hungarians. Make sure you get the Conquest CB, not the other one. Do not co Austria. We don't need to co them. And let's go for the war. We're going to have to rush for a couple of forts here. Obviously, we'll prioritize Zeppelin and Tremchen. But most importantly, we're going to prioritize Vienna. So let's send most of our army actually to Vienna first and make sure they're backed up. Let's also try and get a general. If we get one siege pip, it's going to be of great use. We got some shock pips. That's not bad either. Getting a spy network in Austria is also going to help with the uh, siege ability that you have once you start sieging down Vienna. And if you really want to rush for this, you could also alternatively just get military access from the Bohemians and position your troops in Brno before the war starts. That's also an option if you want to. Don't forget to give out objectives for you vassals and your subjects. I'm going to make the Lithuanian siege down the fort in Zemplin, for example, and the fort in Trenchen, whilst my army deals with the Austrian. Second time's a charm for the siege pip. It is apparently. Let's go ahead and send this guy over to uh, Vienna instead. Should be a lot faster sieging that city now. Don't be worried about war score. You can get some cheap and easy war score by wiping out the enemy armies whenever you see them detached from the main army groups. So I killed off 3,000 units over here. I'm going to kill another 1,000 and another 7,000 there because they're busy sieging down the fort in Podole whilst I'm busy sieging down the fort in Vienna. And there you have it, ladies and gents. On the 21st of November, 1446, we can actually disband the Holy Roman Empire because we've allied all of the electors and we have taken control of the capital of the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, which is exactly what you need in order to disband it. Two freaking years to disband the empire, boys. So I guess it's time we click the button, baby. 100 prestige as well. That's going to come of a massive help in this war. And we can also peace out the Austrians. They're willing to give us a lot of stuff. I actually just want you money, man. That's it. 83 acceptance out of 70. That means we can probably get war reps. We can get war reps. Beautiful. That's going to fix our economy right there. And it's going to help us in the war against what's left of this alliance, which is basically Hungary. They did manage to siege a few provinces down because I gave them the opportunity to do it as I only focused on Vienna, but I outnumbered them massively now and they're absolutely total. You will eventually get the support Roman of Moldova, which essentially can get you the Moldovan nation as a march. You can either send gold or you can send manpower to support them. If you do decide to send manpower, I recommend you go ahead and you queue up all your available manpower, send the manpower, and then you cancel the queue, which essentially means we didn't actually lose any manpower and we got a chance of getting the uh, Moldovans as a march. Darya go. One more subject for the massively overpowered Polish war machine, boys. And we're also going to be wiping out the army of Hungary in Krakow, followed by another Stack and Weipen in uh, Warsaw, and that's the entirety of the Hungarian army. Don't forget to consolidate regiments whenever you go and uh, engage in combat, and you can also start canceling the alliances that you had with the various HRE electors. You don't need these alliances anymore, as the HRE does not exist anymore. Come on, Hungary, I want to kill you off, boy. All right, might not be a stack wipe because they got reinforced by uh, Anhalt, but definitely a super good bat crushed their armies. Let's go ahead and take back our lands and go into their lands now. Hey, would you look at that? The Lithuanians are actually following the objective that I gave them. Whenever you see that the enemy has movement locked towards one province, you can probably catch up to them and kill them off in that province. So make sure you plan this before it actually happens. Think two steps ahead and you're always going to win your battles easily and stack wipe every single enemy army you encounter. So for example, right here, I'm waiting for the Croatians to get movement lock. And once they do get that movement lock, I'm going to also attack them here. If I attacked before, they would have canceled 
coming into this province, but now because they're movement locked, they cannot cancel coming in there anymore. And as expected, I'm Odashtaken Vipen. Hot diggity dog, how did the Yanhaltians get so many troops, man? They got more troops than I got. Well, in that particular battle, anyway. All right, it was Croatia as well, fair enough. And with this fort fallen, it's essentially a slugfest now, and we're just gonna easily take the rest of the country. Ah, the great Vladislav 300, mighty lord of nothing, because he's getting yeeted out the window, goddammit. Imagine trying to bring in a 300 in my royal court. Hello? There you go. Way better, Vladislav II. We're gonna give him a real man's name over here. Octavian Augustus Yagelo. I don't know. That doesn't really work, does it? So we got enough war score to enforce our demands. We're gonna go for this particular war deal over here. Take all the money and these provinces. Why are we not taking provinces to release Transylvania? Well, the reason we're not actually gonna be releasing Transylvania is because we have enough subjects as it is. And in the 1.32 update, what they did actually is they lowered the cost of aggressive expansion. So just feeding the these lands for like four provinces it's not worth it instead just directly take it and this way we got a border with the serbians which is exactly what we want because we want to take some serbian oh my god serbia what the snaps they're winning against the ottomans well hashtag doubt i don't think they're winning against the ottomans but they're definitely not losing super hard let's say concentrate in these areas here and afterwards core it all up same thing here of course we can also do expandio polanski nice and we also took these provinces because a couple of them our orthodox provinces and we want to get majority orthodox provinces in our country because of that we're also going to start converting the province of Lvov it's going to take a very long time but we don't really want to convert this land we're just doing it so we can trigger religious rebels from here another thing I suggest you do you go to your diplomatic feedback screen and you start assigning vital interest provinces around your Lithuanian PU member and whatever other subjects you might have because essentially what this does is it tells your subjects to start getting claims on these provinces so you can attack them yourself after a little bit of time has passed we got our claim on serbia sadly we cannot actually cobelligerate the uh, byzantines because they're getting besieged right now by the ottomans there is a chance that the ottomans are not going to fully annex the byzantines but i'm not going to take that chance i want to attack the serbs because i want to attack and take all of the serbian lands for myself as well as the bosnian lands for that matter and then afterwards we'll deal with the ottomans mano a mano oh man i feel really cut by the Ottomans right now. They've literally taken the one province of Serbia that I'm interested in, man. We've pretty much done everything we can do against the Serbs and the Bosnians. At this point, I just need to wait for the Ottomans to peace out the Serbs. If by any chance they don't take the province of Kosovo, then obviously I'm gonna take this myself. But if they do take it, then I'm gonna have a very different out. Oh, you actual bastards! They took Kosovo, man! They literally took the one province I won. Come on! Really, Ottomans? Really? They've basically taken everything in the Balkans and left the Valachians as an OPM. Come on, really? Actually, that's not bad, because I can vassalize the Valachians and then feed them back all of their cores. That's actually really good. Fair enough. Looks like we gotta do our deal now. If this was an earlier version of U4, I would have vassalized Bosnia so I can feed them back the cores in Herzegovina, but I already have three subjects, and I'm gonna get another one in Danzig very soon, so I don't want another subject in the Balkans. I'm gonna just directly take all of this stuff in the piece deal via the Serbian deal, Darya Go, and now we can concentrate show in these lands, of course, and then make everything full course. That also means we gotta manually get claims on Herzegovina, but it's okay, it's worth it. Beats having one extra diplo relation slot. Highly recommend that you also lower the autonomy in newly conquered provinces. This way you get more income and more manpower from these provinces. We've also taken another 5% crown lands. This made our estates disloyal, but it's worth it because we now have no more autonomy debuff so after lowering all of the autonomy in provinces we've increased our economy by quite a bit and remember to always scout the lands around you for example the Livonians have just become a two province miner which means that they would be more than happy to become my vassal and I'm gonna make them my ally first eventually I'm gonna diplo vassalize them and feed them back all the cores that they have in this area when the right time comes because right now we're gonna focus on the Ottomans and on Herzegovina of course let's go with the Herzegovina Herzegovina war, boyos. Sorry, boyos, but you cannot run away from the mighty Polish Hussars, okay? The Hussars are here for you. And you got Stack and Vapent. 
Looks like it's time to say bye bye to Herzegovina. Nobody even cares about them disappearing. How sad, everybody. How sad. We can get the Ottomans now as our rivals as well, so we can send them a very nice and juicy, scornful insult. The thing with the Ottomans is that if they manage to reach military technology 5 before you, it's pretty much over. They will absolutely crush you. They got military tech 5. I don't have it just yet, but there are some things that we can do to still keep them in check. First off, we've obviously cut off their expansion in the Balkans. They cannot go anywhere without attacking us right now. The only option they have is just attacking Albania, and we can still attack them. Check out which one of their rivals would be willing to ally you. In my case, that would be both the Venetians and the Aragonese. So we could ally the Aragonese and the Venetians and see if either of them would like to join a war against the Ottomans. Normally, in this case, most likely the Venetians would join the Aragonese, not always. But of course, never say never. Sometimes they do join. As expected, the Venetians would join if we offer them some lands. Make sure to get rid of whatever rebels you might have before you start the war. Otherwise, you might end up fighting too many fronts and having too many separatist problems. Let's also seal the deal with the Livonians. Make sure that we have them as vassals so that we have our next war ready and at hand. You can also diplo vassalize them when you are at war as long as they are not at war, by the way, because I've seen some of you commenting that how did you vassalize when you were at war? You can be at war as long as you have the alliance. They cannot be at war in order for you to diplo vassalize them. Let's set Kosovo as the war target, call in the Venotians, and let's do it, boyos. Time for a little bit of there. By getting the war target early on in the war, we secure that we have our ticking war score every single month. We've also integrated Mazovia, which means we can do this mission here that gives us death cost until the end of the game for the province of war, so minus 10%. That's pretty nice, not gonna lie. Well, hello there, Prussian Confederation. Of course I'm gonna ally you, sir. You have my full and utmost support, and you shall always have... Oh my god, are you actually attacking with 7,000? They're not maintained! Oh lord Jesus! Please tell me the Danzig Confederation is gonna win this. Oh boy, if they actually stack up their army, it's gonna be really funny. Daria, go, of course we join our boys in Ver. We're actually gonna have to focus on this war rather than the Ottoman war then. Oh, you bastard, Schlachta. Sure, I'll give you the money. Alright, let's piece these guys out. I'm sure we can do a white piece or whatever. And let's give orders to these boyos to start sieging these lands as well. The problem I'm having is that my vassals are actually just sieging down the allies of the Ottomans, not actually helping me against the Ottomans. But if they're doing that, I might as well make use of it so I can piece out the other nations in that war. Am I right? Oh, no, you don't, Teutons. We're gonna help our boyos out here. Cannot let you stack and vipe them like that, okay, sir? Get out of here, ya smelly boys. Come on, come on. Let's leave some boys behind there and go wipe out the other armies. Hot diggity dong, ya boys are dead. Did, did, did. did someone say a stack and vipe anicum? Yes, yes, indeed. We've also been currying favors with the Aragonese, which means we can also call them in right now and let them do all the heavy lifting for us. And the last Teutonic city is uh, conquered, and as such, we can uh, transfer this to Danzig, let them take it all for themselves, which means we're essentially going to get all of these lands for zero aggressive expansion because they're not yet our vassal, and after they peace out, they will become our vassal. Oh my god, you bastards. Really? They actually let them keep one province? No freaking way, man. And <laughs> I got a truce until 72, bro. Well, now we can make them a vassal. That yeah, go make them a vassal permanent claim on West Prussia, and we got zero aggressive expansion for taking about a hundred something development, boys. That's how powerful this nation is. They are a little bit strong, so they are a little bit disloyal as consequence. We can also placate them if we want. Just make sure you have a strong enough army, and that's gonna fix all your problems with vassals being disloyal. All right, now that we're done with the Teutons, we can start focusing properly on the Ottomans. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some loans, and we're gonna get the one percent burger loans, which are considerably cheaper. We're also gonna accept the institution renaissance, which means we can get military tech five, and that's gonna make a big difference. And because we got that tech, we can also get the new units, the Eastern Militia. We're gonna get one more general, actually two generals, and another one after we get 50 military, so we can slacken, after which we're gonna replace our Grand Company, which has been depleted, with the Independent Company, so we can actually strike back at the Ottoman. And we got the 5% professionalism now. Let's slacken, and after that, of course, as mentioned, we're gonna get the Independent Company. Let's put them over here so they get a little bit of time to uh, get their morale up before they get to the front line. Oh, I'm sorry, did you think you're actually gonna take this province from us, boy? I cannot let you do that, okay? I just, I cannot let you do that. Hey, we finally got Orthodox Rebels, guys. Let the Orthodox conversions begin, okay? No, you Aragonese 
these bastards. Oh god, they're killing my rebels. They're useless. They literally haven't done a single good thing this entire session, man. Imagine thinking you can run away from us, man. I'm gonna take these provinces here. I'm gonna take Gumulchine and Gelibolu so I can release the nation of Byzantium from these provinces. I'll keep Kosovo for myself. That in seven years, I can attack again with the reconquest CB of my Byzantine vassal. Since we're at peace, we can also move the capital to Warsaw now. And we can also see some more crownlands, which in return means we can actually sell some titles, cancel the indebted to the Burger Guild, and after we dev this up a little bit, we're gonna get no autonomy debuffs as well. Remember to focus developing the mine in Hunt and the one in Kosovo, as these are gonna give you a lot of money in the early game. Another reason why I wanted to peace out was so I can lower the autonomy in the Serbian lands, which I didn't before. One more reason why I wanted to finish the war fast is because I need to go to war with the Danes. I want to take back ports for my Livonian vassal so he can actually start integrating the Livonians and so I can prevent the Muscovites from taking these lands from the Danes whilst I'm not looking or something. You know what I mean? Let's make Wendon the target. We can even call in the Bohemians apparently. That's cool. And uh, let's go to war, shall we? Wow, the Danes are actually ridiculously brave. Seriously? You guys attacking my 24th stack? Okay, good luck with that. Pretty obvious that I was gonna win that, I would say, but uh, okay. Seems like the Danes didn't think so. Oh, would you look at that, boys? Sweden is disloyal. That means they're not gonna help the Danish out. Noise. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's the Polish Hussars, everybody. Oh, little Norway wanna reinforce? Don't think that's gonna help much. Nope, didn't help much at all, Norway. But nice, uh, try. Is this, uh, the famous Stackenvapenicum that I'm seeing over here? I think it is, sir. I think it is. Oh, look at that, boys. For once in my life, I actually see one of my subjects helping out in a war. Turco Polish tension you say 4,000 manpower you say oh no the trash starting leader died oh god what are we gonna do we got the cool guy now and me decent air I might actually eat that guy 332 mm, I'll think about it I'll definitely think about this dude oh no did we just kill off the pride of the Swedish army here or oh, better yet the entire Swedish army oh I'm so sorry I didn't mean to I did I did mean to okay I did mean to and you know what we actually can pay them out now we can get everything that we want which is essentially these lands over here back to our uh, vassal the Livonians and all the money that we can take that is more than enough money for me I'm basically getting no aggressive expansion only eight aggressive expansion for all of these provinces and the fact that the Bohemians peaced out a month ago means they're getting no money and I'm taking all of this juicy money for myself let's start annexing the Livonians so we get direct control over these lands in the uh, Baltic you can also concentrate that's gonna make it a lot faster to actually integrate them. That actually shaved off two years from my case. Pretty good. Remember how I asked you to set up your vital interest provinces around your subject? Well, look at this. It actually worked and we got claims on the Great Horde, which is good because we're gonna attack them now. Using these claims, let's go. Oh, look at this, guys. These nasty Great Horde boyos want to take out my 3,000 troopers. Cannot, sir. I'm baiting you in and I'm crushing you with my beloved PU over here. Booyah shakaloo. And another 6,000 Great Horden bites as a Dostenstein in eine Stacken Weipenen. Now guys, this is the massive turning point in any Polish campaign. So if you're going for a standard Poland game where you don't form the nation of Ruthenia and you just form the Commonwealth, then your peace deal with the Great Horde would be something like this. One more province so you can release the nation of Astrakhan and with Astrakhan, which has cores on the entirety of this area, you can conquer the rest of Great Horde in the next war in one go. However, However, if you're forming Ruthenia, and I recommend that you guys do form Ruthenia, then the peace deal is going to be very different. You're going to need 100% war score in this peace deal, and we got 100% war score. We crushed all of their troops. We sieged all of their provinces, so they have nothing left. That means we're going to offer tribute, and this might seem a little bit like insanity, but hear me out. We're giving them all of the Ruthenian lands that belong to Lithuania, and the reason why we're doing this is because because we're gonna take these lands back and we're gonna take them as Polish lands
Netherlands and the war that will follow rather than the Lithuanian lands. You need a 100% war score for them to accept these demands. If you don't get 100% and you get 99, they will not accept the demands. So make sure you get 100%. We're giving them all these lands and making a big juicy great horde. But don't worry, a lot of the times what happens is these lands actually break away from the great horde because they got separatist problems and we literally just wiped out their entire army. And even if they don't break away and one war to follow, all of this is going to be direct Polish land, which is exactly what we need in order to get above 50% Ruthenian. And afterwards, we can culture shift to Ruthenian and form the nation of Ruthenia once we have these provinces. It is important that you give all the Ruthenian provinces, which we just did. Oh god, I forgot Ovrukas. <laughs> It's okay, even without this one province is not a big deal, because we need Kiev, Zaporozhye, and Halix, the three provinces under our direct control in order to form Ruthenia, aside from Ruthenian being the majority culture. And because we lost a lot of land, we got revanchism right over here that offers us manpower recovery speed, army tradition, fort defense, national tax modifier, and so on, because technically we lost our lands since the Lithuanians are our junior partner and because of this we're gonna recover our manpower and our economy is gonna skyrocket 13 ducats right here right now and we're gonna use the skyrocketed economy and extra manpower to kill the Muscovite next weaken them now before they get any stronger and then focus back on the Ottomans and later on once the truce expires with the great horde we're gonna take our lands back of course idea wise I went for quantity I highly recommend you go for quantity ideas first because it's really gonna help out getting the extra manpower as your second idea it really depends it's a little bit situational either religious ideas can be pretty good or economic if you want to play toll whatever the case never go for an admin idea as your first idea because you want to first off unlock admin tech 7 to unlock the second idea fast and that's why you always want to go for military idea as your first idea set we're also still waiting for the orthodox zealots to spawn once they start spawning and once we get above 50 percent of our nation orthodox which is actually not that far off we currently have four 45% Orthodox provinces because we took the land in the Balkans. So we literally just need 6% more Orthodox provinces in order to switch over to Orthodoxy. We need to switch over to Orthodoxy so we can actually get the Tsardom government reform from forming Ruthenia. The whole reason why we form Ruthenia is for that specific government reform, which is the strongest one in EU4 right now. And we will be keeping the Polish ideas, which are essentially the second greatest idea set after the Prussian ideas, militarily speaking at least. And because I I don't want to make this video extremely long once we get 10,000 likes I'm gonna release the second part of this saga and if you want to check the save game you can find it on my patreon link to my patreon is right below in the description and I would appreciate it if you guys consider subscribing it would really help out the channel so much and once we get 115,000 subs my wife's gonna be playing some EU4 so remember to be good people and I'll see you guys in the next video or over on twitch if you want to check me out play these things live bye bye everyone and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members Members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters, I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.